guys, today we've got a lot to do. We're going to an estate sale first and then a really quick stop in a new thrift store in my area. There are a lot of vintage gems in this video and I'm gonna share everything that I actually got with you in the haul at the end of the video. So stick around for that and now let's get into it. We're starting off our day in Leesburg, Virginia at this packed estate sale. As you can see, we're not even inside yet and already some vintage gems popping out. So I'm getting excited. And this is just a friendly reminder as always to keep it classy in the comments. Whenever we go to estate sales, I really wanna be respectful toward anyone who might be connected to these items and just really be grateful that we get to appreciate the items themselves without making any judgments or assumptions about any of the people involved. So let's go inside. I love the room in this house. Look at these built-in bookshelves, fireplace, and the built-in couch in front of the bay window. It's cool. This is cool. This record is signed. So here is the first of the kind of bedrooms that I went into, but this one's obviously more of like a storage room and it was just packed with all kinds of sewing notions and fabrics and patterns. And I was starting to see a lot of vintage patterns and colors and fabrics popping up and look at this psychedelic floral. Like I am just getting very excited about digging through the items in this house. If you don't go to estate sales, you may not realize that they are often a really great place to pick up crafting supplies like this. And I've gotten everything from like cleaning supplies and tools and household goods for a total bargain next to nothing. But today we are definitely gonna be on the hunt for vintage items. I've started a pile of these fabrics. I'm so excited about, but I gotta try to get over there. There's nowhere to put my foot. <laughs> My strategy when shopping an estate sale is to make a pile of everything I'm interested in and then talk about pricing. A lot of times things won't even have a sticker, but even if they do, you can usually get a better deal if you negotiate a rate for the entire purchase instead of individual items. So that's my biggest tip. I'm disheveled. So all of this vintage fabric that I'm seeing is so incredible and now I'm so excited to go find clothing and see if there's like a lot of cool vintage clothing here. Okay, let's see what we can find here. Looks like a lot of 90s stuff. Whoa. We beep up. That's cool. like a blazer. At this point, I am seeing a lot of vintage, everything from 60s to Y2K, and everything has great patterns on it. So there was a lot of fun stuff to look at and consider. And most of the items were plus size at like a 2X or larger. A lot of the items that I actually pulled out of the closet was things that I was really considering for myself. I thought they were cool, but ultimately decided I wouldn't get a good fit on myself. And that's definitely can be the downside of estate sale shopping is that you run into a really specific size range a lot of times. But in this case, I did an unusual thing of putting things back and then thinking about them and then deciding at the end if I wanted to go back for them. I don't normally recommend doing that because someone else can snatch it, but in the end, I think it saved me from some impulse purchases of things that just weren't gonna fit. This cute dress, that looks handmade. It has a matching belt too. This vintage blouse is so cute, but it's got a big rip in it, so I'll leave it. This embossed leather satchel I thought was very cool. It definitely needs some love, and it's just not really my style right now, so I left it behind.
Now we're moving into another bedroom, so I'm kind of back looking at clothes again. So I was like looking through these drawers, looking for clothes, and then I turn around and realize there's a whole closet packed. I'm seeing like a lot of really cool patterns, so let me go look at that. I really do like to dig as much as possible at an estate sale because you never know what could be hiding behind something else. But I'm also kind of just glancing for colors that I'm interested in, like those cool purple pants that were dead stock vintage with the tags on, or fabrics like this leather coat. You never know what kind of quality staple pieces somebody could have even in a closet with a number of items that you're not interested in. So I really like this pattern in this case, but I'm also looking for details that are vintage, like the way that the collar is made, the blousing around the sleeves and on the shoulders, and then looking at the tags to see if the item looks like it's much older. This one is silk. I thought this one was cute in like a Y2K kind of way with all the butterflies and the funky colors. It's just so fun to dig through and be completely surprised by what you're going to find. I also thought this one was amazing. I love the primary colors on it. Just a really fun, funky button down shirt I'm always game for. And this one was a great basic and I loved how it had those brass or like gold buttons on it. That was a cute detail. This is like a faux suede button down and I loved this warm orange color. I own something like that and I get tons of wear out of it. I also checked out the belts because plus size belts are difficult for me personally to thrift. So I wanted to see if there was anything good in there. I'm not sure if there's more, but let's find out. Okay, one more bedroom. Oh, case. This last bedroom was like a big mix of items, not very much clothing, but we're going to take one last look around and then there's more stuff that you won't see until the haul. Right now I'm getting excited about this vintage denim and yeah, we're just going to look at a few more things and head out to the next stop. Look at the curtains. There's a whole bunch of like old curtains. I love that you say you remind me of my grandmother. I like this one. I'm so sweaty. Oh my god. I'm pleasantly surprised with the things that I found. I've got like a tote bag full here. So yeah, this was, this was like unexpected. Very cool. I really wanted to take you all thrifting in Leesburg and I will level with you. I went to three different thrift stores in town and they were bust, okay? I didn't bother to film. By the time I reached this thrift store in Sterling, expectations were very low and I was pleasantly surprised. So we didn't do a lot of digging. There just wasn't a lot of inventory in this store, but I was able to pull out a bunch of vintage t-shirts, some cute vintage tops, and I wanted to show you some of the highlights of what I found. And of course, I'll share everything with you in a little try on haul here shortly. And just know that I'll try to bring you back to this thrift store in the future. They're brand new. They're not quite very stocked up at this time. So I think if we go back in the future, there'll be a little bit more opportunity to really dig and actually make it more of like a full thrift trip, but very excited about these finds for now. And we'll come back to this location in the future. I actually really considered this vintage Mickey and Minnie tee pretty hard, even though it's clearly way too small for me. I thought about putting it up on Depop or something. It was only $4. I felt like the prices in this store were really reasonable in general, but in the end I decided that it was just not in the best condition and it would just be fun to show you because what a cute vintage Disney tee, right? 
And the last thing really quick, they had some rotary phones, which I also thought were cool to show you. So that was Great Falls Thrift. Okay, so I did pick up some pieces from that estate sale as well as the thrift store that we popped into really quickly. That place, the thrift store was like kind of small and lightly stocked right now. I know it's brand new. So I think I'll have to take you back there in the future and it might end up being a place that's really good to like go along with a different thrift store. So anyway, I'm sure it'll come up in a future video. So now let me show you everything that I brought home. Starting with all of this vintage fabric. These are all different sizes, but they haven't really been like cut into. Um, some of them are only like one yard, but a lot of them are two yards or larger, but nothing like larger than three yards. I don't want to throwing you all the measurements, but like basically these are like a reasonable size for someone who was doing like quilting or even wanted to make like small, I don't know, pillowcases or like small kind of like tote bags or something like small projects. And a couple of them would be big enough to do maybe even like a top or a skirt or something. But anyway, I'm not very handy with sewing. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and like put some of these package them like in a bundle and then put them up on eBay or in my uh, neighborhood like Facebook group and see if anybody is looking for vintage fabrics because these were just too cool to leave behind. I didn't want these to just go end up in a landfill. I really have a lot of admiration for people who upcycle vintage fabrics. That's not who I am, that's not my journey, but maybe someday it will be. In any case, I'll let you know if this finds a good home. And actually, if you are someone who does something like that and you're, you might be interested, feel free to DM me on Instagram. The sad thing for me was there was probably like 10 times this amount of fabric in that house. There was a lot of sewing notions, like you could tell. But um, yeah, I just, I couldn't bring it all home with me. So I really hope somebody else found it and was just as excited about the vintage fabric as I am. I did snag a couple of pieces of clothing, but I'm gonna show you a few other things first. I brought home this little vintage straw satchel bag. I am really excited about this because this is the type of thing that I feel like I see other people thrift or I see them in an antique store or something like that. But finding one that's really like my style at an estate sale or such a bargain, like this is just a cool find. It needs a lot of TLC. I honestly, I only like breathe, like quickly wiped it off. I haven't really cleaned it. So I got to do some cleaning on this, but it's, it's other than that, it's in fantastic condition. Uh, this one doesn't have a maker label on it. It just says made in Hong Kong. The next thing is this little stash box. I don't know, like a cigarette box, a cigar box, or like maybe for your weed stash. I feel like this, like it, to me, it really looks like that, but I don't want to get judgy or anything. Like, I don't know what this was really used for, but it definitely has this like very cool Art Nouveau etching into the wood. I did clean this up quite a bit. I haven't thought of what I wanna do with this yet, so I think I might make a nice gift for somebody unless I come up with something that I really need to store in it because I do have a lot of Art Nouveau pieces in my house. I got these two little mid-century wooden um, canisters. They're identical, so I'll just show you. They look like this on the inside. It basically looks like a little goblet with a lid. So I feel like this would be good, you know, in your bathroom to like store your cotton balls in or something like that, but I don't really have a need for that. So again, I've got another little place to stash something that I don't know exactly what I'm gonna use it for yet, but these are just like the shape of them. It's just so lovely and I do have a lot of wooden pieces in my home. So yeah, these are just too cool to leave behind. A lot of places to stash things now. <laughs> and I don't have any stash. I don't know why, but I grabbed this little Avon perfume bottle. You saw that there were, a, there was like a collection of old perfume bottles, which reminds me of my grandmother. So I just, I liked the colors and this one has got a cool like gold filigree and with a coral color. It's an Avon unforgettable scent is what it's called. Um, it definitely smells very potent to me, so I'm not even gonna open it, but yeah, I thought basically that I would put it on display. I like to decorate my shelves in the background and stuff like that, so it could be fun to just add some more color there. Like, yeah, see? And I brought home this Hawaiian music record. I do have a record player and listen to records, so occasionally if I see something that I wanna listen to and try out, I'll grab it. This one, I thought was so cool because it is signed. To Dorothy and Cecil, aloha. 92680. Let's get into the clothes. 
at the estate sale, I grabbed this vintage t-shirt. It was actually like mixed in with the sewing notions and fabrics and stuff. And so I got excited about a vintage t-shirt in like pristine condition. I've been collecting even plain vintage t-shirts and sweatshirts to some degree because I've been enjoying like putting little iron-on letters over the top of them. And then you have like a real vintage t-shirt that you can also like make it your own. So yeah, I think this would be a fun project tee for me. So speaking of projects, um, this blouse I picked up, it was clearly like a handmade project by the original owner. And I could tell that when I picked it up in the house, but I noticed a lot of the clothes that we saw in there were plus size. So I thought there was a really good chance that this would fit me as a button up blouse. I actually, once I tried it on, I realized it's actually a little bit oversized and I don't love the fit of it on me. It's a little bit too like sloppy or something but I also realized that the project was never finished because the buttons are just safety pinned on still they have never been sewn on completely so this one is like a little bit of a wash for me like I'm not super excited about like how this came out in the end but once the buttons are sewn on then it is going to be an amazing little blouse so maybe I'll have to do that and then pop it up on, in one, an, an online shop and see if somebody else is interested in it because it is really pretty. And the last thing I got from the estate sale is this pair of vintage Lee jeans. I was like so on the fence when I saw these, but they looked like they were my size. Now a lot of the Lee jeans that I own are men's style and these are actually a women's style. So holy awesome fit like on my hips and my waist, Batman. Like I have not experienced jeans that fit on my hips and my waist in a long time. So very, actually pretty excited about that. And then it's fun to have like, I love the look of the vintage patches and stuff that you've got on the back. And yeah, it's good to know now, like if I can find Lee women's jeans like this, now I know what, exactly what size to get. Next we popped into that thrift store. A lot of cool little vintage t-shirts, especially in that thrift store, which surprised me because vintage tees are really difficult for me to find in this area. Primarily, I think because I, I think people thrift for them for resale. You know, they're such a good resale item. So I think that a lot of the thrift stores I go to are pretty well picked over. And also maybe DC is just not like the t-shirt wearingest area, you know? Like it's pretty like professional and like a little bit dressed up and buttoned down on this side of the country. One thing before we into the t-shirts I got this cool like vintage 60s I'm guessing brooch it's just a big yellow daisy I love throwing pins like this onto various outfits onto bags onto blazers and things like that to brighten them up and just a big yellow psychedelic floral like this is gonna be fun to play with and this one was only two bucks but yeah, you know me, I cannot resist vintage t-shirts. Like, so I had no self-control. I bought I bought five from that thrift store. First up, this Nags Head t-shirt. I love the lime green and black together. I love the like very 90s design. It just says Nags Head, and then it is labeled this from 1990. So yeah, I think you can tell from the artwork that that's like kind of the vibe. I think this will look really cute for summer just tucked into some black shorts. And I think that will be kind of a look. So one of my favorites is this little South Dakota Centennial tee from 1989. I'm just impressed with this one and all the other tees. Like they're in amazing condition for how old they are. Not unlike myself. You ever feel that way? <laughs> this black football shirt, Muhlenberg football offense. This is a Russell T single stitch, just like the rest. And I love how this and one other one are the athletic style that has like the ringer at the top. I just, I love that detail. It's the little things. And yeah, just the black and white t-shirt like this was gonna go with anything. Here's the other football tee, also like a Russell with the athletic um, ringer at the top. Also a really good condition graphic. This one also doesn't have a year, but it is a single stitch. And I'm guessing again that it's like around the same late 80s, early 90s era. It says 600 pounds bench squat clean, which is a weightlifting thing. I feel like I don't have a ton of like white vintage tees in my collection. I have a lot of other colors and stuff, but like white is less common for me for some reason. And now I got two in this one haul, so super excited. And last, but probably my favorite, the Oak Park 7th Biennial Reunion, Laurel, Mississippi, July 1st to 4th, 1988. 
Yeah, something with this bright blue and white graphic, I really, really love too. This one is a little bit more of like a slim fit, which is awesome. I love having t-shirts in like all different fits. I thought about styling this one even like I styled the one I'm wearing today. It would look cute over this brown dress and have the collar pop out with the cobalt blue and the brown. Like, I love that combo. So yeah, I anyway, I'm just excited to wear this in like a number of different ways. And you'll notice that I didn't style anything in this video. I just basically did a try on for you and I have a very good reason for that. For the month of August, I am filming a special style challenge for myself that's gonna become a video next month. And for 30 days, I am styling up all of my vintage t-shirts. So I'm styling and recording one outfit per day for the month of August, and then it's gonna become a video for you guys in September. So yeah, I'm gonna be looking for all these different ways to style your vintage t-shirts, and I get to feature all of the vintage t-shirts in my collection. So if you're into vintage clothing or tees in particular, you can look forward to that styling video. If you're not already, subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. And I'll be back with you guys next Sunday for a new video. This t-shirt is slightly older than my fiance. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> and I love it more than him. <laughs> so it works out. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Like I'm sort of hoarding. Sh Ooh, no, don't say that. <laughs> and now let me show you everything that I got from both, from the whole haul, from it all, from it all. And the reason why is, uh, and, but I just figured it wasn't a big deal. Here. Oh, I had some like curtain bang thing going on the other day and it was working. That will never happen again. Oh, maybe. Man, if you, if you think you like your hair, I dare you to start a YouTube channel because you will learn how terrible your hair is shot after shot like it's like literally my hair never looks good if you are a stylist in the dc area and you think you can help me please help me like my honestly my hair might be holding me back from doing better on youtube you know like people <laughs> you'll see me with my bad hair and they're like why would i watch your fashion videos why would I watch your style videos? You obviously have never combed your hair in your entire life. It's not true. Clean, it's combed, I styled it. It's a different pattern and cowlick every day. Right now it just looks like a weird like little boy's haircut or something, but. Fuck, okay. Let's just get started. I think it's probably is. Uh, okay, what are we doing? <clears throat> Hey guys, today we've got... <sighs> I think that was good.